بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹل مین دس از پروفیسر ڈاکٹر فخر الاسلام ڈائریکٹر پاکستان اسٹڈی سینٹر یونیورسٹی آف پشاور لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹل مین ان دس سلائڈ آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو گیو یو دی بیک گراؤنڈ آف دا نائنٹین سکسٹی ٹو کانسٹیٹیوشن دی نیچرلی دا نائنٹین سکسٹی ٹو کانسٹیٹیوشن Uh, came into existence after the uh, failure of the 1956 constitution. The 1956 constitution, though was not the best uh, constitution, but it did contain some good things in it. Uh, by and large, uh, if you uh, want to criticize that constitution there were some strengths and good things in that constitution and there were some bad things as well you know if there are some bad things in a constitution those can be removed and rectified through constitutional amendments so if that constitution was given a chance to work uh, the situation in pakistan would have been quite different in the coming years but uh, unluckily uh, when uh, as a result of the 1956 constitution the first government came into existence under the prime ministership of Choudhry Muhammad Ali it was a coalition government and uh, both the wings of the countries that is East Pakistan and West Pakistan were united on that particular document but then there were some uh, you know intrigues uh, in the uh, ruling janta the uh, muslim league which uh, was a party which led the uh, pakistan movement unfortunately could not maintain its discipline and uh, it it fell prey to uh, internal uh, you know differences like pulling etc so much so that uh, iskandar mirza who was the president of pakistan who was elected uh, as the president of pakistan uh, as a result of the uh, 1956 constitution uh, he was the custodian of the constitution but unfortunately it was him who Uh, tried to sabotage the constitution it is on record to uh, that he had uh, once said that the psyche of pakistanis is not fit to democracy and parliamentary uh, system uh, he said that our psyche is super fit for monarchy so there should be uh, uh, you know kingship in pakistan and probably he wanted himself to become the king or monarch of pakistan uh, uh, uh iskandar mirza uh, was the person who created a party inside the house that is the national assembly and that was republican party uh, the brother of khan abdul ghafar khan uh, who is also commonly known as bacha khan his brother his elder brother dr khan saheb was uh, appointed as the president of that uh, Republican Party and on the dent of that political party he became the chief minister of West Pakistan. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, Iskandar Mirza, uh, not only that he created a party, but he did not allow the uh, subs- uh, successive prime ministers to work so he removed Choudhry Muhammad Ali, then he removed Hussain Shaheed Soharwardi, and then he removed I. I. Chandrigar uh, and uh, Feroz Khan Noon. It, some, some analysts have claimed that even uh, uh, Ayub Khan was appointed as the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Uh, he uh, occupied that position for almost four days. So, I mean, this, this was the joke which uh, people were noticing during the life, this, the shortest lifespan of the 1956 constitution. Uh, finally, 
uh, that constitution was abrogated by the president himself on 7 October uh, 1958 uh, uh, and he appointed General Ayub Khan as the chief martial administrator. Uh, Iskandar Mirza was a strange man. He, he thought that he will remain the president of Pakistan uh, even during martial law and Ayub Khan will be his subordinate but this was his misconception uh, you know after 20 days of that arrangement in which uh, uh, General Ayub Khan was the chief martial law administrator and Iskandar Mirza was the president that could uh, last and continued for only 20 days and finally uh, he was forced to leave the country and then he remained in London in a very miserable uh, position where he died. Uh, so this is the background of the failure of the 1956 uh, constitution. It was not the constitution which failed. It was the, you know, the system or the, it, the, the, the leaders who could not implement that constitution in letter and spirit. And unfortunately, the country was faced with the first ever martial law. So General Ayub Khan came in. Uh, uh, he was the person who was planning for uh, becoming the chief martial administrator and uh, the uh, president of Pakistan long before. Uh, he has himself written in his book, Friends Not Masters, that in 1954, uh, he was on his visit to the United States of America and during that visit he had a stop over in London. He was, uh, you know, residing in a hotel and once uh, during the midnight, uh, you know, he was restless. Uh, so he stood up and he, uh, you know, took some pieces of paper and he started writing uh, on them some political, uh, you know, uh, suggestions and proposals which could be implemented in Pakistan. Imagine, he, it was 1954, three, uh, four years before the imposition of martial law. And, you know, interestingly, uh, this, the, you know, all those points have been uh, incorporated in a chapter in, the, in his book, and uh, which is chapter number 11, even today you can you, you can read them and you will be surprised to note that when he became the chief martial administrator he implemented all those things which he had written on those pieces of paper you know four years before martial law so it means that he was planning from a for very long time to become the president and chief martial administrator of Pakistan anyway when he became the president of Pakistan, there are some good things to his credit as well. He uh, introduced some uh, very good reforms in the field of education, industry, law, uh, and so many other field, ag agrarian uh, reforms, etc. But here we would like to mention just one of them, one set of reforms that was constitutional reforms. Uh, you know, uh, from 1958 to 1960, uh, uh, or you may say 59, uh, he remained uh, a very strict martial administrator, but then slowly and gradually, he tried to uh, have, you know, he switched over from uh, martial law to a controlled democratic system. So for that purpose, the first thing which he did was that he, he uh, promulgated uh, a law under which the basic democracy uh, system came into existence. And the uh, they were basically local government representatives. Uh, their number was 80,000, 40,000 from West Pakistan and 40 from the other uh, wing of Pakistan, that is East Pakistan. And actually these 80,000 people were his constituency. Uh, through them, he uh, elected himself as the president of Pakistan, uh, 
during the same year and then uh, you know uh, he started reforming every field of the government and the society and for constitutional reforms he appointed a commission under the chairmanship of justice shahabuddin the chief justice of pakistan and uh, you know based on the recommendations of that commission uh, he uh, uh, promulgated the constitution of 1962 this constitution was not drafted by any elected representative and this was not adopted by any elected assembly he simply convened the meeting of the governors who were only two in number uh, and uh, his uh, uh, law minister mr manzoor kader and maybe uh, two or three bureaucrats so these few people sat together and they uh, you know adopted and approved the constitution of pakistan so naturally it was a joke but yes that constitution was in force in pakistan uh, that constitution was nothing but was a tool in the hands of general ayub khan uh, you know uh, that was uh, an era which was good for economy maybe and uh, good for agriculture and good for industry but unfortunately uh, it was not good for democratic norms and civil rights and fundamental rights of citizens so there was uh, uh, really an unrest among the people so as and when the strictness uh, was you know loosened people you know uh, started agitating against him um in 1965 general ayub khan um uh, held a uh, presidential election in which uh, the uh, the the sister of qaid azam muhammad ali jinnah whose name was muhtarama fatima jana she was uh, supported by all the political forces in pakistan uh, and uh, she was very popular when she visited uh, the country uh, she attracted uh, thousands of people in different cities and she spoke against ayub khan but since the destiny of pakistan was not in the hands of general public it was in the hands of uh, Uh, those eighty thousand people. So when elections were held, uh, Ayub Khan uh, manipulated them, and uh, uh, Fatma Jana was defeated, and he became the president of Pakistan for a second term. I mean, this election uh, triggered the uh, situation and deteriorated the situation, and political forces were extremely unhappy. with manipulation of that election and general public was also not uh, you know happy with the defeat of the uh, sister of founder of the nation but uh, you know in september a war broke out between pakistan and india and all the political por- forces they they came uh, around the table and and they 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 uh, you know uh, started Uh, supporting ayub khan they said that okay we they had some differences with ayub khan but since the uh, security and integrity of the country was uh, at risk therefore they uh, forgot all the differences with ayub khan and and supported him wholeheartedly during the war time after the war you know uh, ayub khan uh sign a peace agreement a ceasefire agreement with india in the uh city of uzbekistan which was uh, nowadays the uh, uh the the capital of uzbekistan but in those days it was part of a uh, soviet union and a declaration was signed that is the tashkent declaration that declaration um uh you know uh um, actually uh, uh, resulted in the uh, end of war and uh, end of hostilities between india and pakistan the uh, foreign minister uh, of that time uh, zulfikar ali bhutto uh, 
developed some differences with Ayub Khan and he uh, founded a political party that is Pakistan People's Party and he started agitation against Ayub Khan. Uh, so all these uh, uh, developments culminated into a mass uh, protest movement against uh, Ayub Khan and uh, finally uh, he uh, resigned uh, in favor of uh, uh, the uh, Chief of Staff General Muhammad Yahya Khan. Interestingly, uh, under the 1962 constitution, which was drafted and uh, enforced by Ayub Khan himself, that constitution provided for, uh, you know, there was a provision in that constitution that if president was in, uh, in no position to hold on to the post and perform his duties, uh, he will appoint the Speaker of the Assembly, the National Assembly, is the acting president of Pakistan. But he himself violated that constitution and finally uh, the, another martial law was imposed in Pakistan on 25th March 1969 and General Yahya Khan became the second Chief Martial Law Administrator of Pakistan. So this is uh, a brief uh, discussion or, uh, you know, description of the events before the 1962 constitution and till the promulgation, till the abrogation of that constitution by Ayub Khan himself. With this, uh, I uh, conclude here. Thank you so much.